Hello, and now we're going to meet uh, Jacques Le Biver, one of the most iconic and characteristic men of watchmaking. And he's just taken over early this year the, the helm of uh, Zenith watches. And let's go and meet what influence he already had on this brand. And in particular, with the introduction of a new movement, the El Primero 21st. Let's meet the man. What does Zenith represent for you in terms of, as a brand, the history of watchmaking? It represents eternity. And eternity, what does it mean? It means art. And which art? Zenith is watchmaking art. And uh, in terms of, uh, we know, in the LVMH family of brands and uh, so forth, we have uh, obviously a Tiger and, uh, and Hublot. Where, uh, will Zenith be kind of in the middle in your eyes? Yes, huh? it will be in the middle. It will be above Tag Heuer, of course and it will be very much below uh, uh, Hublot. To give you an idea, average price Hublot in the shop in Switzerland is 20,000 Swiss francs. Average price Zenith in the Swiss shops is 8,000 Swiss francs. And average retail price in the shops in Switzerland of Tag Heuer is 3,000. So 3,000, 8,000, 20,000. So Zenith is exactly in the middle. And you're coming with this uh, new, because it's a real innovation there, with this uh, one hundredth of a yes. uh, chronograph. Uh, what will be the price positioning of this particular one? 10,000. 10,000. 9,900 Swiss francs. 9,900. But, yeah. For a hundredth of a second. <laughs> For, it's a crazy price. And we have two hairspring that are in nanotube. 100% anti-magnetic. 100% anti-thermic. 100% chronometer. And this has been all internally developed? All internally. Not only with Zenit, it has been developed by a task force of the best people from Hublot, Tag Heuer and Zenit. The three brands came together and the three brands said, what can we give you, Mr. Zenit? And we gave to Zenit the best we have. Well, that's already a pretty clear answer, but you've already asked, t told us that actually in the near month to come, you're again going to introduce something it's crazy. Good. We will introduce something that is Nobel Prize close. Simple as that. Simple as that. It will be a revolution in watchmaking art, not in watchmaking technology, because we are not in the technology. We will always stay in the art. It will be a revolution since 1673. Well, looking in forward 1673, to see. Huygens invented the pendulum. Boom, boom, boom. And then the pendulum became horizontal. And now we will have a watch without any pendulum. Well, I guess we're very looking forward to being there in a couple of months. Me then. too. <laughs> I have six pieces in my office. Oh, already? Okay. To show. Well, we'll have to drop by, I guess. Well, and thank you very much for your time and, and best I of was, luck with I the was forbidden to show it now. <laughs> I'm sure you would have loved to. Show first this, because this is available. Well, the other is one is in June. Okay, well, we'll guess, I guess we'll wait. Yeah. Thank you so thank much. You.